Okay, so we're doing the uh, baby case. Uh, the thank you. So I'll, I'll, Great. Up, I'll do some case description. So the background on the case. So uh, Frank Boyle was found dead in uh, likely what is what was his BC home after receiving several blows on the head with a crowbar. Evidence at the scene consisted of a sportsman brand cigarette and also found Boyle's truck abandoned in a ditch. Uh, various witnesses say that Mr. Feeney, they saw Mr. Feeney driving the truck and so when the police uh, got to Mr. Feeney's house, he knocked on the door. However, when there was no reply, they, they kicked in the door with their guns drawn. So they woke up, Feeney arrested him and after reading him his rights. So once uh, he, Mr. Feeney was taken outside and the police officers noticed blood on his clothes. And when they asked him about it, apparently he sustained it from a baseball injury the day before. The same brand of cigarettes, the sportsman, was found, uh, was, that was in Mr. Boyle's home, was also found in, the tra in his trailer. So uh, he was taken down to the RCMP detachment where he was fingerprinted, uh, forced to take a breathalyzer test, and for the first day and a little bit, he was unsuccessful in contacting a lawyer. And on further questioning, uh, Feeney admitted to hitting and robbing Boyle. Uh, and then a trial in the Supreme Court of BC convicted of second degree murder and then on appeal, the conviction was actually overturned. Yep, yeah, nice. So just a timeline. So 1992 was the first trial where he was convicted of second degree murder. And three years later, the BC Court of Appeal appealed. He appealed that the police took the evidence uh, and, it, and they uh, illegally took the evidence and it can't be used against them and that was denied. Uh, in 97, the Supreme Court of Canada, he appealed to them and uh, and the Supreme Court of Canada appealed and vetoed the decisions, vetoed the decisions from the other courts, uh, and that the evidence that the police had taken without a warrant couldn't be used against Feeney now. And the second trial in '99, the Feeney saliva matched uh, that found on the cigarette butt at the scene of the crime. Fingerprint was also found in Boyle's home, and so they ruled in the conviction of Feeney of secondary murder. And so, uh, just some the identification of morals and more fundamentals. So the main one here is uh, search and seizure. So more specifically, the unreasonable search and seizure under Section 8 of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. So this states that on warrantless arrest in a dwelling, which held that a police officer could only arrest if they have reasonable and probable grounds, which is extremely important. And just a couple of associated cases. Uh, there was one, Clotier versus Langlois which focused on the scope and or the power of the police to search a person who has been lawfully arrested. So in this case, they stopped a vehicle as it had violated a municipal bylaw. Once they had arrested them, they gave them a, a frisk, pat down, and then the respondent was highly agitated and abusive and was successfully taken down to the police station. So this one relates to this because maybe the police was a bit too forceful in kicking down the door with their uh, guns drawn. And the second uh, associated case is RV Bottle and that focuses on the reading of the rights. So the opponent was arrested for impaired driving after failing a road breathalyzer test in the morning. Uh, so in this case, the, the officer didn't read, uh, refer to the fact that free and immediate preliminary legal advice was available from duty counsel who could be reached by calling a toll-free number. And that is because I, I, uh, the police didn't notify Feeney of that. But, uh, I guess. And so, uh, so yeah, those are just some of the associated cases that. Uh, okay. Um, we'll just cut this part out. Just chuck a and go full screen. Not the applause. Yeah. Cut you out. Right. Sound is Okay. Now we have appellant, respondent, and intervener. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, I, I'll just give you, I'm going to do a review of argument and the role of the charter in one, since that's Break pretty it. much the same thing. Um, the main issue in this case is that whether the police violated some charter rights. Um, they were in section 8, 10b, and 24, subsection 2. Sex, section 8 says that uh, you have the right to be secure from a reasonable search and seizure. In, uh, in this case, the police went into the trailer without any warrant. In Section 10B, which is the right on arrest or detention to retain an instruct counselor without delay, 
and to be informed of that right, Feeney wasn't given any caution. Since he was asleep, the officer who woke him up gave him none. Lastly, in their investigation of the accused, what evidence, if any, should be excluded under Section 24, Subsection 2? This meant that without the evidence seized legally, the warrant cannot be used against Feeney. So the explanation for grounds of appeal. Okay, so uh, when the police entered the premises, off of that three vital section in the charter violated, which in turn violated Feeney's rights as a citizen of Canada. Monitor. Okay, respondent, um, just a short statement of facts. The accused was convicted of second degree murder and his appeal was unanimously dismissed. At issue, at issue here are whether the police violated the charter right to be secure from unreasonable search or seizure, section 8, and the right on arrest or detention to retain and instruct counsel without delay, and to be informed of that right in their investigation of the accused, and if so, what evidence, if any, should be excluded under section 24. So, first argument is entry was justified. Entry was authorized as an incident to a lawful arrest. Four requirements necessary to effect a lawful arrest on private premises are, number one, the offense must be indictable. Number two, the person who is subject of the arrest must have committed the offense in question, or the peace officer, <laughs> or the peace officer on reasonable and probable grounds must believe that the person has committed the offense. Three, there must be reasonable and probable grounds for the belief that the person sought within the premises. And four, there must be proper announcement before entry. And argument two, the arrest once in the premises was justified. In order to arrest, the officer must have a subjective belief in these reasonable and probable grounds. A reasonable person with the officer's knowledge would have had little difficulty in believing that the accused had committed the offense in question. The evidence indicated that the officer held this subjective belief. Um, and third, evidence found once in the house is submittable. Police, upon entrance into the private dwelling, do not have to focus solely upon the arrest and can enter with the intention of investigating to either clear or implicate the suspect. The key element of an arrest is the existence of reasonable and probable grounds. The police are not obliged to arrest in all situations. On the contrary, it is perfectly acceptable for the police to enter for the purpose of arrest, while recognizing that the evidence discovered within may well dispel their reasonably held belief. By seeking to confirm the reasonable belief they held, the police are able to avoid using more intrusive pre procedure the arrest by s substituting the less intrusive pr procedure the search. Continuing an investigation after an arrest is made is not improper. And the role of the Charter is just, in this case, to ensure that the entering of the home without a warrant is justified, that the accused rights to counsel is met, and whether the evidence found in the home can be submitted. Take it away. All right, I'll be doing the interview and edit that out. Um, so as you can see, several attorney generals of different provinces chose to intervene in this case. And um, Bob Morgan is at the discretion of the court to allow or refuse an application for, um, for an interview. There are exemptions. So um, sub rule 61-4, if the court has stated a constitutional question, then the attorney general of any province or territory, or if the federal government may choose to intervene as a right. So, given that R.D. Feeney was a leading decision in the Supreme Court of Canada on the right under Section 8 of unreasonable search and seizure, um, many provinces chose to intervene. Um, it was at their interest to intervene, given that um, whatever ruling was made in this case would follow in their own respective provinces. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And obviously, unreasonable search and seizure is something that's very important to um, law enforcement agencies and. Um, the law systems within our country, so this was a very important leading case. Any questions? Um, bigger picture, where is the line for when the police can enter a residence without a warrant? Yes, class? Okay. And one is, were the policeman's actions justified to kick down the door at, at the entrance? <laughs> 